Hi everyone, in this video we will introduce the Heston model, which is one of the most famous stochastic volatility models. It assumes that the asset price but also its variance are stochastic, the variance is correlated with the asset price and it follows a mean reverting process. In the Black-Scholes model, we assume that the asset price S follows a geometric Brownian motion. The implied volatility is assumed to be constant. In practice, we see that the volatility changes with time. We show on the left-hand chart the historical time series of the volatility index VIX from 1990 to 2022. The VIX index is a measure of the expected volatility of the US stock market over the next 30 days derived from the S&P 500 options. The right-hand chart represents the historical daily change of the S&P over the same period of time. We see that volatility clusters. Large movements are, in general, followed by large movements, while small movements tend to be followed by small movements. We also observe that after periods of large fluctuations and high volatility, the volatility tends to go back to normal levels when there is an improvement of the situation. So we observe that the volatility tends to mean revert to its average level on the long run. The long-term average is typically close to 20 for the VIX index. Negative stock returns tend to be associated with higher volatility, and we observe a negative correlation between stock returns and volatility changes in general. There are two main explanations for this in the literature. On the one hand, when a stock goes down, the leverage of the company increases, making its equity more volatile. This is the so-called leverage effect. On the other hand, persistent high volatility can cause stock prices to drop with the selling of risky assets and flight to quality by risk-averse investors. Heston proposed in 1993 a model to value options where both the asset price and the volatility are stochastic. In this model, the volatility follows a mean reverting process and the asset price and its volatility are correlated. Under the real probability P, the asset price follows a process close to the geometric Brownian motion, with mu the drift of the price process, but the instantaneous volatility, the square root of the instantaneous variance, is stochastic as well. In the Heston model, the instantaneous variance follows a cox ingersoll ross mean reverting process. Here is a simulation of a volatility path with the cox ingersoll ross model. The kappa parameter controls the speed of mean reversion of the process. It represents the velocity at which the process will revert to its mean. Theta is the long-term mean of the variance. When the distance to the mean is high, the strength of mean reversion will be high as well with a strong opposite force pushing the trajectory back to its mean. The higher the kappa or the distance to the mean, the stronger the mean reversion force. The volatility of the variance xi, also called vol of vol, controls the amplitude of the possible fluctuations around the mean. If 2 times kappa times theta is higher than the square of xi, then the instantaneous variance is strictly positive. This is known as the failure condition. The randomness of the asset price and its variance are controlled by two correlated Wiener processes. The correlation rho controls the relationship between the dynamic of the underlying asset price and its volatility. Rho will be typically negative for stocks. So in addition to the drift of the asset price process, the Heston model has five unknown parameters. Nu0, the initial level of the variance. Kappa, the speed of reversion of the variance process. Theta, the long-term mean of the variance. Xi, the volatility of the variance, or vol of vol. And rho, the correlation between the stock price and its variance. We will now simulate the distribution of the asset price at a time horizon of one quarter, changing the different parameters. First, we assume that the correlation and the vol of vol parameters are equal to zero. 
The volatility is deterministic in this case. We also assume that it is constant, equal to 0.2 on an annualized basis. The initial variance and the long-term variance are both equal to the square of 0.2. With these assumptions, we are back to the Black-Scholes framework. The log return follows a Gaussian distribution. The initial variance nu0 and the long-term variance theta both control the volatility of the asset price return. The vol of vol psi controls the tail risk, the kurtosis of the distribution. A higher vol of vol will increase the probability to have extreme movements on both sides. The distribution is no more Gaussian, it has fatter tails. The correlation parameter rho controls the asymmetry of the distribution, its skewness. A very negative correlation, like what we observe in general on the stock market, would increase the probability to have very negative returns with higher fluctuations on the downside. In this case, the distribution would have a negative skewness. The speed of reversion parameter kappa has a more limited impact on the asset price distribution. In practice, it is often fixed, all other parameters being enough to calibrate the model. This parameter can be better interpreted with the concept of half-life. The half-life is the average time it will take to get halfway back to the mean, which can be calculated as a ratio between the log of 2 and kappa. For example, if kappa is equal to 0.3, then the half-life of the process is close to 2.3 years. A higher kappa will reduce the half-life as it will increase the speed of reversion. In the next videos, we will present the risk-neutral pricing of vanilla options under the Heston model. We will see how to calibrate parameters to option prices and to value exotic options, and we will discuss the limits of the model. Thank you for your time.